Today, we're talking about our team, but not just any team members. We are going to discuss team members who live way, 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 way far away from us. Some people call them their outsource team or their offshore team, but at Acuity, we just call them our international team. So let's get into why we started hiring internationally almost five years ago. What have been some of our challenges with international teams? What's worked out well? And how ultimately, why we think our international team members have only become more important to the growth and success of our firm. All that today on Drink While You Think, a happy hour conversation between a couple of guys building their accounting firm in really weird ways. I am your host, Kenji, with my homie, my main man, my co-host, Matthew. Matthew. Who is our sponsor today? Today's sponsor of Drink While You Think is Earmark. Earmark. Every CPA who listens to podcast once had a dream that they could get CPE credit by just listening to their podcasts and then answering a few simple questions. That dream has become reality with our friends at Earmark. Earmark, the CPE go-to place for podcast listeners. Beautiful, beautiful, Matthew. Well executed. The voice was just fantastic. So, okay, what are you what are you drinking today? Um, well, uh, Blake and David were kind enough to send over uh, a couple of stouts. So I like that they get extra points. Like they might get a couple episodes of sponsorship because they sent stouts instead of IPAs. Um, but I am drinking, um, this is appropriate because both of us are going to the Caribbean soon. Um, but I'm drinking the dragon fire. Uh, it's an original Jamaican stout. Uh, so I'm really, I've never had this one. So very, very excited. Um, I'm even importing a glass, um, out of respect for Blake and David, uh, being so kind to send beers this way. So yeah, very nice of the earmark cloud accounting, no longer the accounting podcast. Terrible twosome, David Leary, Blake Oliver. Thank you guys for sending these beers. Hey, Matthew, I want you to do something first while I'm pouring mine. Yeah. Check the ABV on that beer you just poured. Oh, ABV on that. It's like a 9.6, I think. Keep going. So my, oh no, 10%. We got a double digiter, folks. We are in double digits. Double digital. you're, you're, You're drinking a good one. I am. I'm drinking. This is the... North Coast, Old Rasputin. You see that? Pretty nice looking beer out of California. This is a good one for me. It's, a, it's again, a Russian Imperial Stouts. Also, these guys are a B Corp. You know, I always love that. So cheers, dude. That. Cheers, man. Ooh, I like you have the right glass. That's awesome. I do. Ooh. You hmm. got the good. fire going? That's pretty That's good. good. Yours is Jamaican. Yeah, it's interesting. Jamaican beer. Well, I've, I've never had a stout that's that claimed to be like fire. So I'm waiting for like the burn. So, okay. What do you want to talk about on the international teams? Guys? Okay. Let's, let's, I'll, okay. Let's do a quick lay of the land for everybody. All right. Okay. As of right now, we have team members in four countries outside the United States. There are the Philippines, St. Lucia, which is down in the Caribbean. Greece and Argentina. And we're going to focus this discussion really on the Philippines and St. Lucia as collectively, there's almost like almost 50 people in those two locations. So. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say we should give Jessica love too. Jessica. So yeah. What happened Greece. To, why did like, did balloons just you, jump up? There's this, this new weird thing in zoom. If you're watching on YouTube, like, yes, you, you make these hand motions and all of a sudden things start happening in zoom. Zoom's getting weird. Um, but again, little land, about Matthew's trying to do magic on Zoom. I do have to go watch what he did. That's kind of going to freak me out. I don't know. I don't know. About one third of Acuity's team today is made up of international team members. So, Matthew, that's where we are today. Well, let's talk about how did this get started? Like, right? How, how did this, I mean, almost five years ago was Philippines, right? And we'll talk about St. Lucia maybe next, or you can talk either one of them. But like, how how in the world did we? Do you remember how we started this? Like, what prompted us? I know how we started Greece. I know how we started Philippines. 
St. Lucia. Yeah, I think I know how I started everyone and I know how. Okay. Okay. So well, like, let's focus on, let's again, let's focus on St. Lucia and Philippines. I think that's most helpful. Okay. So Those are at Philippines, scale. we started because we had, oh, because one of your forum mates had had some good experience with some EAs, just some virtual assistants. So that's um, correct. Yeah. So like we were like, oh, let's get to virtual assistants, just period, virtual assistants. Yeah. And and um, so we found um, Gailey and Lisa, and it helped that we got really good people the first time. We did. Um, but then from there, that was our intro into like, oh, this is not scary. This is not intimidating. This is a pretty big lift yeah. uh, off of us. And then I felt like it just snowballed from there. Uh, yeah, I, I like, think that's a good, yeah. On ben, Philippines, that's a good kind of, it was basically a friend of ours that we knew who was a business owner, good experience using people in the Philippines. So we kind of just want to lean into it and listen to it. He had developed, this is our friend, Brad Stevens. Check out our buddy, Brad. Um, he is outsource access is his company. He has really become a guru in, how to really operate with the team over in the Philippines. And so he was kind enough being a fellow EO member and a forum mate of mine to kind of give us a bit of a playbook about, hey, here's what's really worked, right? And so he- Yeah, I remember going things. through a process where he coached us through. He was like, because he was like, he specializes in virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. So he, he's not really in the accounting world, but like he really helped, like the concepts carry over, right? He was like, okay, let's identify all the things that are repeatable in your process that you could get lift if you gave them to another person. Yeah. So you kind of like went, so we literally had all these spreadsheets going with the five of us that were going to use the two virtual assistants with all of the recurring tasks that we thought like there's some place we could improve process, delegate, whatever. Yeah. So that, the main, that the exercise main prompt, was really yeah, The helpful. main prompt was, so the question was something like, what are tasks that you are doing today that are getting in the way of things you, you really prefer to be doing that are more valuable, right? And he started with that. And then he made us, as Matthew referred to, kind of go through and he's like, he really pushed us. We had to take all these team members and go and kind of lay out our day by all these tasks. And then you could, by doing that exercise, you could start to see where, oh, this is kind of repeatable. I could maybe give that, I could instruct someone how to do that. And then- he had started using some websites um, that were Philippines based to do some hiring of almost like Fiverr or Upwork back in the day, but were just Philippines only and kind of gave us a good idea about here's how you should go and post for jobs, right? here. And really it was more about how do you get people to respond in a way and do a good virtual interview like five years ago over, you know, with using things like video and remote workforce, which was really pretty unique at the time. So. Well, also, I think I attribute getting good people to like something that Brad had told us was like, hey, if you are hiring for a compliance job, create four compliance tasks within the job thing and don't interview anybody that doesn't do all four. Yeah. So they had to like send a resume and fill out an application. They had to do a one minute video. They had to do this task over here. I, there were like three or four things yeah. they had yeah. to do. And it, man, it went from like 500 people filling out something to like 10 you focused on. And then we interviewed three of them. And we, like I say, got really fortunate. Well, maybe that was by design. Maybe the process just worked. I, I, a little bit of both. And we got lucky, but I think Brad is a master of processes and it really helped us kind of follow in that process, which I think is foreshadowing into when we get into like what things have worked well for us is right from the gates, we had a bit of a process. We did not go over and just kind of start sifting through a website looking for people. Like this was, you know, we were forced to go through this very methodically. Um, and I like what you said was, well, we had observed through other entrepreneurs this working for them in some lower level tasks. And we thought, okay, well, let's try that. We didn't come in trying this on accounting clients, like a clients of ours. No. Like, oh, let's just see if they can help us in our business, right? Right. And, that, that, I think that was a big reason why we were able to win. Because yeah. we saw the lift and then we we're like, oh, if this can lift us, then I can, then it can lift our clients, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. It was pretty cool. Okay. So that's how we kind of got going in the Philippines. 
you really were at the kind of spearhead of kind of getting St. Lucia going. You want to talk about how that came about? Yeah, I mean, so, well, we were kind of at a place where we were pretty, like, we probably had our first typhoon in the Philippines, right? Um, we knew it was working, and we could double down and go 100% there, but there were a couple of things with the Philippines that we still haven't figured out 100%, and still to this day, I haven't fully reconciled with because the time zones are opposite and things like that and making people work in their evenings versus their morning. I don't know. There's a whole philosophical thing that you go through as an emotional struggle, making people shift their days. Um, so there was, there's a couple macro things there that, that I probably when we were about 15 people in the Philippines that we really had to make a decision. I felt like about whether to just go a hundred percent to one location or, if we should think about, did we do this right? Or should we have some other um, headquarters, you know, that, that that some other place like India or somewhere that, that might be beneficial. At the same time, in this case, it was in my network. I had some friends that had 30 people in the Philippines for a decade. And they had had some struggles because they needed to be there more. And so they had been searching for two years in the Caribbean and found St. Lucia and they had five criteria. I always um, can't remember the fifth one, but it was a uh, stable government that was friendly to U.S. folks, uh, stable Internet outside of the hurricane belt, stable electrical grid. And there's one other thing. Um, and they're female business owners. I think it had something to do with um, uh, doing business with women and having that kind of like there's a little bit of machismo culture in some of the places still in the world, if you understand. If, uh, <laughs> so anyway, they had done the research and stuff like that. And then they had an opportunity for us to come in. And we were actually there. They were their first client for their entity in the St. Lucia, like their U.S. business. And then we were their second client. So they just had space and, and stuff like that. And we had this opportunity to do that. Um, and that was still early in our process I, I don't know how long we've been in st lucia do you know like two or three years i'd say three closer to three years two or three years so two probably... two and a half three years Somewhere there. something like that um so this is only we're only 18 months into our philippines journey at this point so so you know early on we decided you know what 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 would what would happen there um oh english is the first language was the fifth thing so gotcha. uh, so uh conversational English as, as the first language. Um, so that that was helpful um, to have, again, another entrepreneur there that was kind of blazing the trail for us um, and kind of riding long shotgun with them and help doing some cost sharing for them um, as they kind of grew yeah. there. Um, yeah, we I think we first told them we'd have like four people there. Don't worry. It was just only four people. Now they're like, you know, you have like 16, 17, 18 people here now, right? <laughs> and we were like, okay. Yeah, it's expanded so, quite a bit. But that was kind of the origin yeah. story there yeah. is like, we were kind of at a crossroads where we kind of felt like we had to make a decision. I don't know why we. I felt like that. Maybe you, I don't know. Did you feel the same way? I didn't right, really feel that way. I liked the idea of having trying to de-risk if we were concerned about things happening in one country that we need to balance some things out. What we, what we saw early on was just the depth which is somewhat obvious of the international labor pool and just the good experience we had with them. So oh. we felt like there was something there, but I think you were very much like, Oh, we got to de-risk and, and have the time zones a little bit closer and things like that. You, you know, what else happened right before that is seven contracts in the Philippines that expired on the same day. And we had a bumpy ride renewing all seven. And we were like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> like, like, like all of our eggs are going, we're putting, like, are we comfortable putting them all in one basket? Right, so that was right. kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of the yeah. pitfalls. Well, but before we get to that, I'll say, I think the, what I would say that the, the thread on these were, um, we just observed other businesses, other friends of ours. We got out there and asked questions around talent and team members and what are people doing? And honestly, they all, all those came from outside the accounting profession. And we kind of were listening. Both and were outside, was interesting. Yeah. And so I think we we really felt like, and, and we're pretty experimental. We thought, let's try that out. With small little experiments with them, 
instead of just kind of going big there. But we did that very early. Basically, so other people would pave the way and we just kind of followed suit. So I think that was a, that's always been helpful for us. I'd recommend other people. Now, many more accounting firms have done it like us. Many more have done it. You can learn a lot from others. People are always willing to share. So anyway, if you're thinking about it, talk to some others out there. There's lots of experiences to be shared there from this. And I mean, even as you say that, Kenji, like even when we, even though we had success with the virtual assistants, direct with direct relationships with us, when we went in with accountants, we went in with the partner in Philippines. Now that you say that. Yeah. Because we were still not quite, we're still new to it. We were like, we believe in it, but we still want help. So yeah, one thing that Matthew, we didn't mention that right, lay of land for right now is um, in the Philippines, in, in St. Lucia, we work with one third party group that we know very well. Matthew just referred to them. In the Philippines, our team members are across three different places. And one is these independent contractors. Those are some of the ones we started with originally out of the gates that when we weren't going in with kind of the accounting focus. Then we kind of went in through uh, our friends over at TOA the outsourced accounting group, many in the accounting space know them, and also Nimble, um, Dave Olson's group. Um, so we have two different third parties in the Philippines and some direct. So we're at that way today. So we have a blend of a bunch of different things we've seen and experienced there. So um, and maybe some of this will feed into this next question, but what have you felt like are the most difficult like challenges um, that, we, that you have to face when you've got international colleagues? So it, it, it took me somewhere between 12 and 18 months per country for like some landmine to stop going off, like some holiday, some labor rule, some, oh yeah, we do it this way. Oh, some stipend. Like there was something it felt like almost every other month for 18 months. Yeah. And it took like a full year and a half to feel like I was comfortable enough to know what was going on. So you I totally refer to mostly kind of different business practices, you'd say, or maybe. Oh, I have a good example in the Philippines. Yeah. So it took me four months to realize that the English proficiency test that Toa was using was written only. Mm -hmm. And that we had to screen for verbal. We actually had to lower the written score that we would allow to get enough verbal candidates that had good enough right. verbal English to do that. Because some of those people that scoring in the 90s were just all book smart English and could write great in English, but then you get them on a call and they couldn't speak English. And then, so we literally dropped the uh, like, okay, screening score from 90 to 70 because we didn't like, we just needed written to be okay, but verbal was going to be more important to us. Yeah. Just because of how we operate and how we let people talk to people. So yeah. Now, that was a that was an interesting one, right? And that was not intuitive. Like that the score for language proficiency doesn't consider verbal language proficiency. Right? There's a there's a bunch of you kind of go in having some understanding. This obviously it's a different country. They're different countries, they operate differently. We're gonna see some different things, but there's a lot more than I think we expected. You know, you kind of just, you kind of get in and there's, you know, the holidays, pretty much everybody has more holidays than the United States does. So you got to be mindful of that. Um, oh, and, the, the know, sick leave rules in St. Lucia? Sick leave rules. Like, do not contact them. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. They're getting paid from the government right now. If you try to reach out to them, like, yep, and during are. COVID, that sucked. Yep. There was that. Um that, that was definitely challenging. I think all the different typical things like stipends and subs, you brought 13th month, which is something over in the Philippines, which oh, yeah. is, is kind of a, it's, it's a bonus period that pretty much everybody gets over there. So you're like, what is 13th month or, you know, or what is that? That's a end of year kind of bonus that almost all Philippines employees get there are things like rice stipends, all kinds of things that um, are just different. I mean, and I think I don't know their challenges, maybe initially their challenges because it, they just operate a little differently than we do. It becomes kind of fun and interesting. Like I think we've tried to do a good job of every week we, we talk about in our announcements channel, like what, where, where our team members live, like what holidays are going on to try to get team members to understand the cultures a bit better. So it's kind of fun. 
but it's different operating. It's not the same way we operate here in the U.S. So that that's a challenge. What other challenges do you think people should know going into having international team members? Um, other areas that have been difficult. Well, I think definitely depending on how you interact with people, the any like several of these countries, this will be the second language people have like or 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 use right right yeah so i think you have to really develop that muscle of being able to work with people whose second language is english mm -hmm. and we have we have some folks in the u.s whose second language is english right and we have to if you don't have that you don't know what we mean but like um i'll never forget thinking that jaime was shy right and when we went over to Philippines, Kenji and I, this is one of our top bookkeepers in the Philippines. And everybody's like, oh, he's quiet, he's shy, he's whatever. And then we're at a karaoke bar. And to close out the night, he gets up there on stage. It wasn't karaoke bar. It wasn't even karaoke. It was a band. Yeah. And they brought him up. <laughs> like he somehow got on stage and belted out this thing in his first language and he is not shy <laughs> he is not shy he has his second language is english <laughs> so like like i th don't you think it, that it's was funny like an how you forget moment? how he got on stage i'll just tell you how he got on stage there was copious amounts of having fun with that philippines team we were at bars late night with him having a blast and matthew I, you were up there giving hefty tips to that that band up oh, on okay. stage that's how he got up there but he killed it brian killed it up on stage up there it was great it was, oh yeah I made the, the language thing is a, is a big one i remember the, the other one that i have to remind myself of that's a challenge and it gets back into again the way that we work here in the u.s and what we value is often very different in different cultures it's just i have to remind myself of this a lot and when we were in the philippines we were either talking like it was brian or wowie or maybe jc um, probably in the group of them, we spent a lot of time with them. And I remember them, them saying, I was asking like, what's difficult for them working with us. And they said that they care so much about making their colleagues like us happy that they'll always say yes and want to help. Yet sometimes we in the States don't give enough direction. And so they said one of their, what they'll often do is, you know, we'll maybe say, Hey, I need you to do these things for me. You got it. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm going to do it because they really care about helping so much, but we really haven't given them enough direction and they tend to be a little bit, not as forthright or maybe as comfortable, especially going in hierarchy, kind of going back and saying, I didn't get that. So what they told me was, Kenji, what would be really helpful is if I ever tell you that again, yeah, yeah, I got it. Just say, great. Um, Talk me back through it real quick to make sure you got it. Or just, they said, it's okay. Challenge me to actually say back to you because then you can correct me or you can help me kind of do that. They really, really like process, very clear processes, but they also want to please so much. But sometimes they said, yeah, we'll get a little bit stuck with like, I wanted to, I wanted to say the thing that made Matthew or Kenji happy. I didn't quite get all of it. So they were giving permission of like, feel free to say, hey, did you get all that? Where do you have questions? Can you tell me again what you heard from me? And that's not something that most U.S. team members would ever want probably or ever think about. Um, they want more freedom to kind of like, let me go figure this out on my own. Whereas some of our international team members were like, man, the more specific you can be would really be helpful to me. And so I have to remind yeah. myself, that's a very different way that I operate. That feels restrictive and micromanaging to me if someone do that. To them, it's at least a few of our team members that felt very comfortable. So just those styles of working are, are different and can be a challenge if you're not prepared for that. This is where I think I hear every time when someone says, oh, Philippines or India, or someone where internationally didn't work for me, I almost always find they did not really spend time giving very, very clear, concise directions or processes. It's almost right. every single time. So yep. you have to have invested in that. If you don't, we've invested a lot in it and we still have to go back and reinforce it. So that's a challenge. Um, on the flip side of these, was there, 
Was there anything you were worried about going internationally that once we were there, you're like, oh, this was not a big deal. Like I, I, you know, did some kind of preconceived notion you had of like, oh, this, I thought this was going to be hard, but like, no, not a big deal. Well, the, well, I mean, the notion that I see most people have is like, it's a black box, right? Like it's not people. So like the aha moment for me was like meeting people and hearing them like talking about their families and stuff like that. It's like, oh, like this is just people. Like that was an aha moment, right? So I don't know that answers your question, but like that's what I think of as like where it clicked for me was like, oh, we're going to have to have training. We're going to have to have career progression. We're going to have to have um specific process tasks to work through for for all these team members um i don't know why i wasn't thinking that way initially it, it's but just after, so far, it's after so the far philippines away, yeah. trip in particular yeah i was like it clicked in a way that it doesn't click if you don't go it does yeah, yeah. which is why i'm glad you're going to st lucia you've never been to st lucia so Leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow at this time, I'll be on a flight down there. I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, yeah, you'll the love one, the team there. The, the one that I, I can't wait to get down there and see them and spend time with them. The, the one that I, and again, you may debate me on this one a little bit. I it always just heard like, oh, this time difference is going to be so, Oh yeah. I don't think that's been a big deal. I mean, now I don't want to overstate that where but now, because we have some people working US hours. And I agree earlier, you talked about do you make people work in our hours or not? But I mean, that said, I think so much of the work we do these, day, these days is asynchronous. I mean, it's got to be turned around in a certain amount of time, but like in a business day is usually plenty sufficient. And so I think I was like, oh, they're not in the same, how many time zones away is it? Like, I don't really care. The thing I care about is, oh man, they're just that much further from us physically. Like it's harder to see them. Like that, I don't like that part of it. The, like the, the, work the further, yeah, I agree with you. The further physically, I underestimated that. The time zone, I overestimated the impact of. Perfect, perfectly said. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. So both those two things, yeah, underestimated physical distance, over overestimated time zones. Yeah, I think a lot of people think it's going to be a huge issue that people are going to. But that's just a. That might be just a me problem because I like being in person with people <laughs> so well, it's you and me both then because it made a huge difference to us being with the team and i hope yeah. for them too so it's just that's the hard part we have acuity con coming up when all of our team comes in and we haven't been able to figure out yet how to do international team members being with us physically yet it's just well we've hard. been doing we've been doing some road shows so we that, yeah i mean so we get people together but like it's so, just but we haven't we, you, you, that that day, that day somewhere in the future when everybody who works at Acuity like is in the same place physically, that's just going to be cool, right? Yeah, but that's I mean, cool. even to be fair, even like the U.S. Acuity team members, like we don't get everybody together. <laughs> like you know what I mean? It's pretty close, like, but we don't. I mean, but yes, yeah, still people it's people just, opt out. You know, you exactly. you know, we usually get two thirds. You know, like we usually have a good showing, but like. So what what is okay? Let's flip it over. We're kind of heading that direction. The things that were not as hard that we thought were going to be hard. I and mean, what about stuff that's worked well? Like what when you look at like oh, why is this working? We're we're essentially doubling down. We're going heavier there. What are some of the things you're like when someone else asks you why? Why are you guys over there? Like oh well, here's why. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's how we treat people the same across U.S. and international, but like. Turnover was great. Like we didn't have like over the last three years, we had terrible turnover issues in the United States and like having employee turnover. I guess we're so much more stable in St. Lucia and the Philippines. Yeah. So like, these are like so much more long tenured people that it's just, it's, it's just hard not to ignore some of the macro trends going on in the U S economy right now. Like, it, it is. It is. Like the last three years have been brutal for accounting firms in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, factoring in with that, we, in one of our core values is being happy. Like that's it. That's very, very important to us. Um, personally, 
We always say to each other, like, you happy? Like, hey, man, yeah, if we're not happy, like none of this, nothing about it is worth it if we're not happy. And the goes, same goes with our team. And so we measure that. Like we, every single month across every employee, no matter where you are, we take a look at basically it's, it's a, you know, NPS scoring, essentially a happiness metric from our friends at Gusto and their, in their monthly surveying. And we look at it across all the team members and internationally, our team members internationally score higher on the happiness scale that they enjoy working at Acuity than they do in the U.S. It's not a humongous, crazy gap, but it's it's noticeable. It's it's relevant. And I think we see that in terms of, like you just mentioned, the retention on international team members has been stronger. And so I, I think we have to infer they're explicitly telling us they're happier and we're seeing that in them staying longer. And so there, that means there's things, things we could probably be doing better for our U S team members for sure. But there's something there that's really interesting about that. Like that's working, that that's data that's coming back to us saying this is working. We're seeing across the board internationally that it's not just, we started with just doing virtual assistant type work in the Philippines. I'm trying to think of a single team does not, I mean, very, almost all of our teams have some aspect of an international team member working in them somehow. Maybe not full time or a huge amount of time, but like some of our teams internally, our sales team is mostly made up of international team members, ops team it's members. A, it's every team now. It's every team. No, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not just, it might be, it is. Because we just talked, HR was the last that we didn't have somebody. That's true. So HR accounting, IT, service lines, and sales and marketing all have That's right. international team members. All of them do. So it's not just, let's give them just a virtual assistant thing over here, or we're just doing tax prep or follow-up work. They're literally now across all of our teams. And so that experiment of realizing they can play a role throughout the entire company was super impactful. Oh, I mean, for super sure. Super impactful. So that, that's another area too that just is... Um, Fantastic. And again, all the again, when you open up your ability to go hire and recruit, not just down the street or not just in the US, it really changes things. I mean, this this is it's a real problem. It's been talked about ad nauseum. Gives me heartburn thinking about it. the problems we have with people going into accounting in the US. That's not the that's not the case everywhere in the world. Right. Um, and and there's no doubt about it. Small businesses did, businesses need more help today than they've ever needed. So we've got to find those team members. And if they live in Atlanta, Georgia, or they live in Manila or in St. Lucia, that's fine by us. That's fine. So anyway, I think that's worked really, really well. I also, um, I just like, I just like the different feel it gives to I don't know. I mean, to me, being in the Philippines last year with them and you're instantly walking in the door, meeting team members we'd only ever been on Slack with or on Zoom. And we were treated like family. I mean, immediately treated like family. Like you're like, just something about that where, oh, to have relationships with people who are on the other side of the planet who feel strongly and connected to you. What a cool benefit that is of like, oh, next, I mean, I don't I don't know. Now, now I have a kid who's over there somewhere in Australia. What if I were to if I were to go fly through that part of the world, but I want to stop and go spend time and see people there? Absolutely. When they come yeah. here, I want them to come and spend time with me and my family. I, I would. Absolutely. So um, I don't know. It's just really cool. It's a cool dynamic that I never thought was possible in a small business like ours. You know, I agree. So many, many great things there. Um, I guess we'll finish with this looking forward. I mean, looking forward here at Acuity, like how do you see international team members like playing a role kind of in our future? Well, I think the, like as soon as you make the leap from it's outsourcing to it's like people, <laughs> then then you start questioning when you post a job, like why is it geographically restricted in a virtual firm? So I think we'll continue to have that. I don't know that we will post a job that will have a geographical restriction in the future. Yeah. 
Like, I think we're, I think as we, fi if we figured the product out, like, so like, I think we're still figuring out CFO, right? But we figured out that like, I, I can't see a team member where we wouldn't consider like where we wouldn't be agnostic where they lived. Absolutely. Yeah. I had basically any level in the organization. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's a, that's a five year shift, right? That took five years to get there. It took us five years to where we went from virtual hey, assistants. We'll give you some admin tasks. Yeah, admin tasks to where now in every single of our functions at Acuity, an international team member is playing a significant role with. Um, I think looking forward, I think that should speak to, we should see even more, our team becoming even more internationalized, right? We should see in the future more and more yeah, team I think, members. I think, I think that's like, a, I think it just like work, like it's as, it's almost as complicated working with different states now in the US as it is different countries. So I think like, like, no, I mean, seriously, it's a perfect like, point. can it like Colorado, California, New York better be careful because like they're, they're making it harder to do business. Yeah. And Texas thinks they're their own country anyway. So I mean, Texas why not? always did, but they don't, <laughs> they don't have as so big a The U S is actually, you're people. right. I like this theory. The U S has already prepared us for like, these States are almost all different from all kinds of rules and regulations with employees the banking and the financial system here is so fractured and fragmented. We are used to having to deal with so many different entities. So why not? Why not open it up? Open Let's it up. Go. Let's go. That's right. I mean, you know, so I, I agree with you. I think we'll see many more international team members playing a role at Acuity. Um, we are- many more. I think we're going to have more U.S. team members, more international team members. I think- I think, but if you, I mean, this is what people don't understand. Like, if you don't treat people like people, like you're screwed. Yeah. Like, so like, get over that fast if you're going to do this. <laughs> that was my advice to people. Well, well and it's why I was, takeaways I, was, because I was particular at the top of the pod mentioning that we really work pretty hard. We, we don't do it perfectly of like, not they're not our offshore team, not our outsource mm -hmm. team. Like we try to really be cognizant we even of that. did that we even did that when we have third parties in the intermediary we're like i don't care you're like an acuity person like what does an acuity person get you get a t-shirt for acuity con like we're sh shipping you the acuity con t-shirt exact same things we even get with the postage in the philippines <laughs> like, i want you to have the same things here and so I don't want to know how much FedEx we spent that first year in the Philippines, oh, like sending individual the shipping packages. back and forth of all the swag for AcuityCon was not cheap. But no, you know, that was uh, but, like you learn stuff like that. There's stuff you buy there. Okay. We, we figured out a better way. <laughs> but what we didn't budge on was the principle of they're being treated the same way we're being treated, right? To the best of our absolute ability, um, because it's just it. It's not. I don't think we're like. Pat on the back, or me and Matthew are such good guys. Like, go and meet them, and you're like, those are my colleagues. That's who I enjoy working with. Of course, I'm going to treat them that way. It's it's kind of obvious once you do it. Yeah, and we're not out like trying to save the world or something. We're just like, that's just the right way you treat people. I mean, that's how yep. our mamas raised us, right? So that's that's how we were raised. All right. Well, let's rate some beers here. Jam. Um, and these are these are these are something, Matthew. I'm in the Matthew zone here, drinking Matthew beers. Um, okay, so I'll go and uh, let's you, take a can look. Can you feel your teeth? I I can I can feel it. Can you see the? No. No. I'm the worst. Why, you have so much trouble with your Zoom, dude. It just I'll makes zoom, me. Try it one more it time. makes I me zoom. laugh. Never. The balloons ever, come ever. up. Balloons rise from the ashes. I'm trying to still make it happen. It doesn't work. Nothing. Okay, I can see it. Old Rasputin, it says. Old Rasputin. Okay, Old Rasputin. Um, four and a half for me, dude. I love this. This is great. The I'm fall so is starting to, to happen. It feels right. I haven't had a porter in for a long time like you have. It's just the That's a stout, dude. It's not a porter. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. It is a stout. It is Don't a, confuse my beers that I love. Fresh Imperial oh. Stout. Sorry. It was excellent. Excellent. 
Uh, Matt, okay. yours again is the dragon. I, I'm going with the dragon stop fire. There, um, it there it is. I'm going to go 375. 375. Um, I really think that the Caribbean should stick to the light beers. You'll, I, you'll yeah, find I was going to say. You, you, you'll find this with the uh, the the um, the pitons. Yeah. So drink a piton for me this okay. week. So well, I'll drink a pit. I'm going two after you. <laughs> I know. So funny. We're gonna we're gonna basically almost high five each other in the concourse there. It's you're you're gonna like you're gonna like this one, dude. That's a great. Um, That's I'm a solid. For, beer. I'm gonna look for more North Coast brewing. Uh, so we gotta go good. B Corp. Shout out to the B Corp. Shout out to the B Corp and huge shout out again to Mr. Leary and Mr. Oliver for being sponsors and sending us beer. That's how they're getting shouted out, people. They sent uh, us this beer. It's not that yeah. hard. Yeah, we should we should have them load this one on Earmark and and, and like give people CPE for listening to us talk about international. That's right. So. We do have some more beer incoming, so we're starting to pick up the pace. I'll I'll, I'll tell you about that later. But um, oh, that'll be good. I, I'm all have I'm all good with that, dude. Well, cool. Don't forget to send us more beer. Shoot us a message. Let us know what you want us to chat about. But cheers, everybody. Thank you. Cheers.